I'm Gary and I'm in the Snooker Shed. Hey people, welcome back to the Snooker Shed and it's absolutely fabulous to be here finding time to make some videos back in the shed for you guys. And we're going to start off with this video which is all about learning. I'm going to give you five key points that's going to increase your learning per hour. And if we can increase the learning per hour, we're going to get much better, much quicker. Hi, I'm Fergal O'Brien, professional snooker player and now coach, and you're watching the Snooker Show. So let's start the video with the very first tip. And the very first tip is discipline. And discipline works across the board. It is the most important tip that I can give you, because if you can do everything in a well-disciplined manner, then your learning per hour will go through the roof, which means your game is going to improve rapidly. Let's have a closer look at discipline. So why is it I've made such a bold statement in saying that discipline will improve your game so much quicker than anything else? And it's really simple. If we follow a structured set of instructions given on any task, and we do them after one after the other, exactly in the order they should be, and to the best of our ability, and repeat that over and over and over and over again, your brain will learn that set of instructions very quickly. So take for example, if we know that when we put our foot down, it needs to be in a certain place. Discipline will repeat that every time and put it in the correct place. An undisciplined player will put it in different places. So therefore, the learning your brain is your brain is saying, I'm not sure where the foot goes. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's there. Where the disciplined brain will say, yeah, that's where it goes, because that's where I put it yesterday a hundred times. So you can see just from that little example of where we put our foot, how important it is to be disciplined and how much more information gets stored in your brain correctly. Now, one of the other things that discipline brings, being self-disciplined, is it helps with concentration. If we're going to carry out a set of steps correctly with discipline, we need to be concentrating on those steps. And we know if we can improve our concentration, then again, our learning per hour is going to go up. Now, we've just scratched the surface in the connection between discipline and learning. But I hope that you can take from this first tip something back away with you. And if you can, you're definitely going to improve. So let's look at tip number two. And tip number two is learning to strike the cue ball in the centre. Now, why is it so important that we learn to strike the cue ball in the centre? Well, to improve your putting, to improve your positional play, and to improve your angle recognition, by striking the centre of the cue ball, all these areas will improve much quicker. Let's take a closer look. So why is it so important to strike the cue ball, or learn to strike the cue ball as best we can in the centre? And the main reason for that is it reduces the amount of unwanted side. And the word is unwanted, which means we really don't know how much we're applying. We really don't know when we're applying it because it's unwanted, it's unknown. So if you take that to the learning side of playing the game and you're trying to learn a black off the spot, a half black off the spot, if we're already applying left hand side unknown, then the cue ball will deflect, it will deflect to the right, which means our brain is adjusting for that right deflection when we're aiming. Now, yes, you'll put the ball and you'll consistently put the ball using that. But the problem comes in when you decide you want to use side for position. Because we've got an unknown amount of side going on the cue ball, to accurately to add the side we want for position makes it a lot more difficult. Also, if you change tables, if you're playing in one club on one table and another club on another table, or like cue balls, the factors will change again, which makes the pop a bit more different. And that means more chance of missing. Moving on then to tip number three. And tip number three is staying down on the shot. Staying down on the shot gives you a massive boost in learning. When you stay down on the shot and you watch what happens on the table as your shot unfolds, the learning potential that is there is massive. 
Okay, so what are the boosts to learning from staying down on the shot? Well, we're going to take two scenarios here in this wee brief section. The first one is when it goes wrong. So when you play a shot wrong, you normally get up, say some things, feel frustrated, angry, and leave all the information of what went wrong on the table. Whereas if you stay down on the shot, you will know what side of the pocket you missed. Did you play it with left hand side instead of right hand side? Was it too much side? All the information that you gather from that shot helps you understand why the position was wrong or the pot was missed. Now by taking that information and giving it to your brain, then your brain will process that and hopefully take it to the next shot and correct what you've done wrong. And on top of that, when you walk away with that frustration and anger, you're passing that on to the next shot. So the second part of the boost and learning that you're gonna get when you stay down on the shot is when it goes correctly. Now we all know when we hit that cue ball and it is sweet, you hear that object ball crack in the back of the pocket, there's nothing more satisfying than seeing that, feeling that, hearing that happen. But again, if you stay down on the table while that takes place, what you're doing is appreciating the shot that you've just made. You're enjoying that part of the game. And you're also telling your brain, this is how we want to do it. This is how we want to cue. That was a perfect positional shot. This is how I want to see the balls go into the back of the pocket. So much learning that your brain then can take, store and hopefully repeat on the next shot. So tip number four is going to be keep your head and body still on the shot. So why is it so important that we keep our head and our body still on the shot? Well, we all wish we could play like Alex Higgins, who used to dance almost while playing the game. But us mere mortals can't do it like that. So we must give ourselves every opportunity to deliver that cue and see where we're delivering the cue ball every time perfectly. So if you think about your eyes as what we use to aim, whether you look at the cue ball when you strike the cue ball or you look at the object ball when you strike the cue ball. Either way, your eyes have to stay on that point. As soon as your head moves as you're delivering the cue, so does your eyes. These are our sights. You move the eyes, you move the point where you're striking the object ball or cue ball, depending on what you're looking on. So you can see the problems with that. If you constantly move the sights, it makes it more difficult to strike the cue ball and place it where we want. When we look at the body, the body's exactly the same. Unfortunately, our head is attached to it. So when the body moves, either way the body is going to move, so is your head. So holding that body still helps keep the head still on the shot, helps keep our sights fixed on where we're wanting the cue ball to go. Tip number five, and the last one for this video, is the pre-shot routine. Why is it we need a pre-shot routine? What is a pre-shot routine? And how does it benefit our cue sports? Let's have a wee look. So the pre-shot routine really is a set of instructions. And those instructions lead us to send the cue ball to where we want it to go. So the importance of having a good pre-shot routine covers things like consistency. If you have a good, consistent, repeatable pre-shot routine, your game will come more consistent. If you have a good, consistent pre-shot routine, you could always diagnose your game much better when you miss a ball or get a position that isn't what you wanted. Everything that happens in the pre-shot and post-shot routine as a result of what you're seeing on the table. And what I mean by that is if you miss a shot, something went wrong in the pre-shot routine. If you miss the position, something went wrong in the pre-shot routine. So having a good pre-shot routine, and not only that, understanding what the pre-shot routine could do for your learning per hour is incredible. So what we've done is we've scratched the surface of five key elements that I think if you apply, you will definitely improve your learning per hour. If you've got any questions, please 
Leave them down below in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you've got any personal questions, I'm also doing one-to-one -one videos here at the Snookers Shed and I'm also doing one-to-one -one coaching here in Scotland. I'd like to thank all the people that has continued to support the channel when it's a wee bit dry lately when I've not been making videos. I've been really busy improving my own game and getting some coaching badges. So links are in the description for any personal contacts that you would like. There's an email there. Just send me an email if you'd be interested in some one-to-one -one tuition. And listen, my name's Newt Wales and I'll see you on the table. <laughs>